Florida's got a lot of breweries, and I went to about 75 of them just this year. I've been to probably about 100 overall, but I'm going to tell you about the 75 that I went to this year, fresh 2021 in February and March. Let's go. So let's start with number one. I was in Orlando and I went to Baron Peacock, which is actually a brew story. So they're, you know, making whiskey and that sort of thing, as well as maroon beer and good beer. I ended up hanging there for several pints before finding a place to camp. Next day, I went to Brew Theory, which I wasn't sure what they were. Were they a school? I'm still not sure. I went there and the bartender, I don't know if she was new or what, but she didn't have much to say about the beer or anything. But they definitely had uh, guest taps as well as their own beer. It's definitely a place I'd like to go back to and learn a little bit more about, but in this case, not so much. Went to uh, Tampa next. My buddy got me a bus ticket there. Thanks, Randy. <laughs> and as soon as I caught up with him, he's like, let's go to Angry Chair which is my jam. One of my favorite breweries of the trip because I'm an Imperial Stout guy and they had a lot of Imperial Stout. Some of their bottles were selling from 30 to 100, I wanna say $120. I might be wrong about that. Expensive bottles and there are people coming and going constantly and I had a few of their uh, flavor, like kind of pastry stouts and Angry Chair, that is the jam. Uh, next we went to Southern brewing and winery. It's also a homebrew store because actually my friend is a home brewer and he needed some uh, supplies. So while we were there, we got some beers and uh, good stuff. That's a great place to go just because beer nerds, uh, guest taps, they have some mead there. That is a definite stop if you're a brewer, if you're into the whole scene. Next we went to Seventh Sun, also a classic in Tampa. They had a bunch of good stuff, although actually my first beer got dumped because it wasn't great. My buddy dumped it. He's like, I don't like that look on your face. <laughs> and he dumped it. I forget what it was. I think it was a, a Belgian double or something. But um, my experience with them in the past has been pretty great. That Seven Sun. Next day, we went to uh, Rap Brewing in St. Pete. Phenomenal. <laughs> if you like German beers, go. They also have a bunch of like peanut butter and jelly beers, crazy stuff like that. They do a really good job with it. So if you're into like peanut butter and jelly beers and like crazy flavors, you will love it. And if you're not into that, stick to the German beers and you're gonna be just as happy. Classics. Uh, at that point, my buddy dropped me off. I was on my own, I went to Overflow Brewery. Pretty cool place. They got a spot that feels like a little living room right there in uh, St. Pete. I believe they're on Central or close enough to. And yeah, just kind of a good feel. They had a reasonable IPA. Next, I went over to a Bayborough Brewery, also in St. Pete. Uh, their porter, very good. Cool vibe, a lot of games, that kind of brewery. Found a place to camp. Uh, next day, started getting all kinds of other stuff, but I went to Green Bench Brewery. Green Bench, big outdoor kind of fake grass kind of area. Um, lots of good IPAs. <laughs> that place is... Uh, pretty dang good. That was the day of the AFC Championship game, so I went over to Ferg's, not a, not a brewery, so skip Ferg's big sports bar. Uh, also, while I was in St. Pete, looking at my notes here, there's a lot of breweries, man. <laughs> Let me take a sip of beer. Cheers, everybody. Went to uh, Mastry or Maestry over in St. Pete Beach. Had an Imperial Stout there. I was kind of in a hurry, I forget why, but they had a few beers that looked good over there, and the Imperial Stout that I had was uh, pretty solid, and it was, I think, the only one really right there by the beach, so go check them out, for sure. Uh, back towards Central in St. Pete, I went to Pinellas Brewery, one of my favorites in town, for sure. I mean, they had 30 or more beers on tap, including a smoked Schwartz beer, which, how often do you see a smoked Schwartz beer? I don't remember the last time I ever did, and I might never have. So I got that and several other beers. Everything I had was good. Really love them. Over to Three Daughters. They're kind of one of the bigger ones in St. Pete. And honestly, I was pretty shmammered by the time I got there and there's some live music playing. I was making friends. Don't really remember the beers being bad. I think they're okay. And everyone speaks really highly of them. I know I got an IPA for sure, and it wasn't offensive. And I think if it was offensive, it would have cut through the music. So 
check them out as well. One of my favorite breweries that I actually did a separate video on you can look at, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and the stuff people say, hit the like button, all that junk, and then look in the channel and find Flying Bow Brewery. I did a whole video just on Flying Bow because they were that awesome. They just opened their beer garden. I met several of the owners, if not all of them, all very cool. I met the brewer, super cool. All the bartenders, awesome. The beer, delicious. The vibe, excellent. The food truck, which I didn't try, but by all accounts, awesome. Flying Boat Brewery, just huge shout outs to Flying Boat Brewery. A little bit off the beaten path, but still walking distance from Central. Highly recommended. I hitchhiked to uh, Sarasota. I wound up at Big Top Brewery, which has several locations. Another one I went to, which I'll get to later. It's one of the last ones. Uh, Big Top, circus vibe, awesome time. I missed a uh, Grateful Dead cover band by a night. Uh, solid beers there. The next day in town, I went to uh, Calusa, which was by far my favorite in Sarasota. Calusa is awesome. If you like hazy IPAs, you're good. If you like big stouts, you're good. If you just like big, bold flavors, you're good. Clean beers, Calusa. I wanted to do a video just with them. They were phenomenal. Uh, they recommended that I go to Brew Life, also in town. So I went to Brew Life. Really cool vibes in there. I didn't like the beer as much as Calusa, but it was different styles, you know, like brown ales and stuff like that. And I'm real picky about brown ales, but they had a decent one. So go check out Brew Life. What happened to me next was I wound up in the Bahamas. <laughs> I texted a friend out of the blue. She needed a camera sent over there. It's a whole story. There's a video about that too. You can check it out on the channel. So I won't count the two breweries that I went to in the Bahamas, but that was an awesome time. Before I got there though, someone I'd met at Calusa drove me to Orlando so I could catch a flight to the Bahamas. And I went to a brewery there called Ellipsis. Ellipsis is just a killer, you know? They're a killer. Like, crazy good hazy IPAs, big stouts, they know what they're doing, good artwork, tall ceilings, like they're just a modern badass brewery, like a don't miss it kind of brewery. If you're in Orlando and you're going to four breweries, I guarantee you, you're going to Ellipsis if you know what you're doing. That was awesome. Went to the Bahamas, got flown back to Miami, just a really lucky dude <laughs> lately. Uh, someone who picked me up hitchhiking, uh, picked me up at the airport in Miami, and we went immediately to Unseen Creatures and then Lincoln's Beard. Unseen Creatures, I kind of wish we had stayed longer at both of these two breweries, uh, but my buddy wasn't super into beer. Uh, but yeah, good IPAs there. They did not have a stout at Unseen Creatures, which was unfortunate just because I'm a big imperial stout guy. Great IPAs. Uh, Lincoln's Beard had a bunch of guest taps and it was more like rowdy. There's actually a fight going on when we first got there. Some dude like, what, what? <laughs> but it was a cool spot. Like just a lot of, a lot of energy. Uh, next, uh, my new friend dropped me off the Florida Keys and at that point I was hitchhiking. Again, I have a whole video about going to every Florida Keys brewery in one day, which is what I did. There's four of them. The first one was Isla Mirada Brewery which is also a distillery, similar to Baron Peacock in Orlando. Uh, half the place was a gift shop, half of it was sitting area. Uh, decent beers, crazy flavors, all kinds of flavors. I mean, bring your grandma there, she's gonna be happy. Like, everyone's gonna be happy there, uh, unless you're like super, super into beer. And then, uh, you'll, you'll still find something. Uh, just down the road, uh, walking distance very much, Florida Keys Brewery itself. Definitely my favorite of the four in the Keys. Their stout was amazing. Uh, and just, yeah, generally good beers too. Also very gift shopping, but that's okay. Uh, next, I hitchhiked down to Key West itself. And in Key West, there's Waterfront Brewery. Waterfront Brewery, awesome location and hell of a happy hour. I forget what, I forget what it was, but I got like, you know, a beer. And it was good. And then some locals sat down and they got a flight and it was like $3 for a flight. Super good happy hour. Look into that and great locations on the waterfront. Then I went to First In Flight, our First Flight Brewery, uh, just down the way, and they had a band playing. The beer is okay, not too bad. Awesome people though. It's just like a magnet for uh, tourists and probably locals alike. So really cool vibes. Decent beer for sure. Not, not terrible. I was expecting terrible. I thought they would only have these three beers, but they actually had Quite a bit, so that was pretty good. 
So I camped and I hitchhiked north and the next brewery that we actually come to, unfortunately I skipped a lot of the breweries in Miami, but I got to Funky Buddha, which is kind of my favorite brewery in Florida, or it was until this trip, and still awesome. Uh, I think people give a crap because I don't know, they got bought out or they made a distribution deal. I don't know what they did, but their beer is, woo, I had at least 18 beers while I was there. <laughs> I'm not joking. Not, you know, not Folsies, but 18, like, yeah, I had three flights and then some. You name it, they got it. Peanut butter beers, classic just brown ales, stouts, IPAs, different kinds of IPAs. Funky Buddha is just on their game. Like, I'm sorry that, I'm not sorry, whatever, whatever they're doing business-wise, whatever, their beer is phenomenal. I uh, caught up with a friend who lives just north of there, stayed with her for a couple days. And this is the part of the trip where I started walking a lot more instead of uh, hitchhiking. Uh, where was it? In Boca Raton. I went to uh, Barrel of Monks. And that place was okay. I was expecting a little bit more. I got the idea that something was going on, like there was a change of hands of brewers or something. So it might just be a transitional thing, but they're quad. <laughs> yeah, get the quad. Everyone in the know was getting the quad, and I forget what I got first. I think I went for the Trapel or something, and the Kegged Kick or something, but oof, the quad. That's where you want to be. So then I got a little bit north, I believe that same day, and I went to three breweries at once. Yeah, that's right. Three breweries all right next to each other. When I say walking distance, I mean very, very walkable. Nobo, Due South, and Copper Point. And of those three, due south. Winner. <laughs> Nobo, I don't know why I'd heard of them. And they just like had a couple stats on the menu that were actually kicked. And I was like, oh man. So I got something there. It was okay. Very friendly people there. My God. Locals, uh, everybody. And then I got to do south. And I kind of had low expectations. I don't know why. I think I just saw their can art. It just didn't look impressive. And maybe someone had given me like a weird, but they were awesome. Oh my God. They're, um, something fifth IPA, fifth wing IPA, you'll see it. Oh my God, that is awesome. It reminded me of one of my favorite breweries in Wyoming, Melvin. Uh, on point, double IPA, so good. Everything I tried from there pretty much was great. <laughs> uh, Copper Point, um, yeah, more of like a pub, kind of like, not an Irish pub, but like closed in kind of feel, kind of tight knit, kind of like that. Also a pretty good spot, but at that point I was uh, pretty toasty. That was, a, that was a full day right there. <laughs> Next day I walked up to Matthew's Brewery in Lake Worth, <laughs> and pleasant surprise too. Really cool bartenders, just knew their beer, liked to party, telling me about kiddie pools and their backyard and having a good time and just enjoying themselves and making good beers over there. So I really like that. And they, I'm glad I went there, obviously, because <laughs> they told me about um, Dixie Bar and Grill. I think that's, yeah, Dixie Grill and Bar, one or the other. And I was kind of going to skip this place because it seemed like one of those like afterthought breweries. like. And that's kind of what it was, but I'm, I, I had this, yeah, so it was more of a restaurant than a brewery. But I got this Imperial Stout with peppers, and it was... It was legit, so I'm glad they told me to go there because I was prepared to skip it. And that was West Palm, and then once I got into the heart of West Palm was one of the breweries I was really looking forward to and it did not disappoint, which was Civil Society. They are IPA heavy, so they had, I counted, they had 20 beers on tap and 14 of them were IPAs, and most of those 14 were hazies. <laughs> uh, they did not do flights of any kind, so you kind of just got to jump in and just like choose which hazy you might like. Uh, with that many hazy IPAs, I would have preferred if I could, you know, get a flight and like kind of try a bunch of those back to back. But instead I just sat there for like four or five fullsies <laughs> and had a great, I started with the Imperial Stout actually, but it was like a maple syrup Imperial Stout. Not my favorite flavor for a stout, but they did a good job of that style. So I appreciated that. And uh, yeah. Obviously all their IPAs were range from good to amazing. So, and there's another civil society coming up. So while I was there, there's a guy I just met 
uh, in St. Petersburg, who owns the Box Gallery there, Rolando, shout out. Badass dude, uh, he owns his gallery there. He ended up uh, putting me up for uh, two or three nights at his place, and he just knew everybody in town, including the people who owned uh, Steam Horse Brewery. So he took me to Steam Horse, just had a quick beer there, and then he also took me to Accompolis Brewery and Cidery. And that place was pretty badass too. He had a table with his own art. Rolando knows everybody. What up, Rolando? You're watching this. <laughs> Awesome. So that's, that was actually a lot more cider than beer, but um, a, a good spot. Fortunately, I didn't meet the owner that night, but um, really cool spot. Uh, Rolando introduced me to another guy in town, Aaron, and he took me to uh, Skunkworks Brewery, which is fairly new. Uh, a lot of good lagers. That's kind of their jam. I actually got a Pilsner there. Not usually my uh, style, but I was like, hmm, I can, you know, it's been a minute since I've gotten a good Pilsner, and they produced a good one. <laughs> I like that spot quite a bit. Back downtown, same guy. He took me to American Craft Ale Works. And uh, being downtown in a touristy area, I was not expecting anything, but they had a white stout on tap, and that's kind of like another kryptonite beer for me, and I got it. And also, it was delicious because <sighs> white stouts, man. You never know. If you haven't had a white stout, try it. But be being a kryptonite beer, I've had every single one I've come across, so I have had some, some duds, like too sweet, too muddy, uh, and it was good. It was good. Like it cut through, a little coffee flavor. I was like, whew, was not expecting that from like a tourist area brewery, but they happened to uh, smash it. So the next day I was back on foot, just walking and I walked up to the Brew House Gallery, which is also known as Kelsey Brewery. Man, I had fun there. It is awesome looking. The artwork is so cool. I briefly talked to the artist uh, via text, because guess what, Rolando knew him too. <laughs> so I introduced him to me via text. Didn't get to meet him, but his artwork was so cool. Uh, so there's the brewery itself, and then there's actually a gallery which rotates art, which you can't take pictures of in there. Um, but so cool and then the bartender was relatively new I think he used to work for Do South and does some home brewing so I was just nerding out with him about travel and beer had such a good time I was on such a high when I left there and just a few blocks away is a uh, Coastal Karma Brewery Coastal Karma oh man you walk in there it's just wide open there's like swings or at least a swing so cool you can see through back to where they're brewing um, I believe it was a husband wife operation the husband was back there brewing the wife was uh, bartending and then a friend of theirs was sitting at the bar and I told him kind of what I was doing this crazy mission and he's like oh well, I've got a van let me uh, take you around so this started what was probably the drunkest day of the trip but let's not call it the drunkest there might have been some other ones but this one was pretty gnarly so he took me to the next one which was twisted trunk we got an ipa there pretty standard ipa it's sort of like a shopping mall ish 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 kind of brewery but uh not too bad the next one was uh another civil society i believe at this point we're in jupiter florida on the east coast another civil society location again <laughs> same beer is very delicious we went to a beer garden there called das beer garden and then finally we went up to to cuesta which i barely remember i'm not gonna lie like it's on the list i've got video of it kind of um but man i was pretty pretty toasted <laughs> i woke up just somewhere in the woods camped out in my bivy like okay i guess i got here i somehow squirreled out of there and i uh, got moving um kind of took one day off because i just had to walk but i got up to stewart next in the back of a pickup truck i actually hitchhiked up to there i went to a brewery called ocean republic it was empty when i got there i got there when they first kind of opened they had a coconut porter i got that it was pretty good for a coconut porter and again, it was a brewery I wasn't really expecting much from, and uh, I didn't try much from them either. So, but their coconut porter, I was like, oh, okay, there you go. I walked a little bit further north, and I went to Side Door. Side Door was cool. It was uh, kind of like a tight, tight bar, you know, like not a lot of seating in there. But uh, I believe I talked to the owners, at least the brewers, and they were all really cool, talkative, telling me about their beers, sharing travel stories. They had plenty of beer to share, believe me. Like, that's 
a definite stop if you're up there as a side door, just good people. So the next day I got up to Fort Pierce. <laughs> I went to Sailfish Brewery. That was another surprise. Four or five big barrel aged imperial stouts. I was like, all right, these are my people. You know, there's a couple like weirdo flavors in there that I, there's a lavender, I forget if that was a stout or not, but there was enough big old stouts to keep me happy. And then I was walking, there was another Isla Murata location up there, but on the way I saw a sign for um, Pierced Cider Works, so I had to stop in there. That was the next one, and uh, yeah, mostly cider. They had some beer there, but phew, that place is awesome. I really recommend, even though it's cider, go in there. Really good vibe. They got a big outdoor area with a stage, just a lot of character. One of the best things I did on the trip. I made so many like temporary friends while I was there, just like really good vibes. People invited me back to their house, just going back and forth between the bar and there. Holy recommended. <laughs> uh, woke up again camping somewhere there nearby and my next stop was Vero Beach. I got to American Icon Brewery up there. It used to be an old abandoned sort of, I guess I call it a warehouse. My bartender was a young dude. He said when he was in high school they used to break in and like skate and smoke and do whatever. I don't know, I forget exactly what he said, but it was that kind of vibe. They've been nothing since the 50s and now it's a brewery. Uh, little walk away from there. That's the dog. Freaking dog. Probably just wants a beer. So anyways, <laughs> I walked over to Walking Tree. Uh, Walking Tree is a big wide open brewery. You know they're gonna expand. Uh, they had a nice little hot dog food truck out there for like a couple few bucks a hot dog. Like reasonable food truck, I'm in. That's pretty rare. Usually it's a little crazy. And uh, yeah, decent beer there too. And it was getting on sunset, so I quickly walked back to the main highway, <laughs> Highway 1, and I managed to hitch a ride in the back of a pickup truck just at sunset, that got me up to Sebastian, and I went to a brewery I was looking forward to, uh, someone had told me, called Mash Monkey. And I walked in, and most of the bar stools were full, but I found one, uh, and the, there was a couple next to me, and she told me like, oh yeah, everyone in here is a local, everyone in here is coming back constantly, and man, every beer I had there was a killer. I had uh, some kind of Belgian strong, I think, when I walked in. I was like, whoo, all right. And eventually I had an IPA that just blew me away. It was just like, it was just that classic kind of like West Coast double IPA that just, no one's really making as much anymore. It was just so good. It was, it was like the Due South one. Those two so far are like the best, just like double IPAs. I was like, man, mash monkey. So, I wanted to kind of stay there, but a couple doors down was Pareidolia. I don't know if I'm saying that uh, correctly. Pareidolia. But I went there and I got flights and pff, they had good stuff too. I can't knock them either. I, I was so high off a uh, Mash Monkey, I was like, oh, pff, I don't care if they suck, but they did not suck. Pareidolia, they were, they were on point as well. And the brewery shut, I went to a dive bar. That was a drunken night. Some of y'all, I met at that next dive bar, maybe you're watching this video. Hello, I'm still alive. <laughs> I can't move some train tracks that night. Oh man. <laughs> Somehow I'm still alive. I hitched another ride in the back of a pickup truck. Uh, that guy got me up to Melbourne, Florida, still on the East Coast. And I went to a little spot called uh, Hell and Blazes. I just had a beer there. They had good vibes in there, but I was dragging. So I just had the porter, and it was, it was pretty good. It was above decent, but I was just like kind of dragging. I, I should have stayed there and checked out a little bit more, but I don't know, it was kind of like a, more of a restaurant vibe, and I'm not even sure if it was a restaurant, but uh, that's one to go back to. Uh, and also I was excited to get to Intracoastal, which was a little bit from there, and I just heard a lot of good things, and <laughs> that place smashed as well. They had a bunch of different kind of styles, and they had a, it was like a place with a brown ale. Like, 80% of brown ales are awful, but that 20% that are good are amazing. And uh, they were up there, 
And they just had a bunch of different styles. There was good vibes, big beer garden kind of atmosphere there. So I was into that. Uh, the next day I walked up and I went to uh, Charlie and Jake's Grill, which was, um, I'm sorry you guys. Like it's, it's more of like, I think a barbecue restaurant. The place was fairly packed, but their beer just seemed like kind of an afterthought. It was sort of wishy-washy, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. It was, it was not very good. Um, they might make some things, but it, was de it definitely seemed like an afterthought. I apologize, Charlie and Jake. Um, maybe you take more pride in it, but uh, clearly the place was packed because they also had, I don't know, Miller Lite and stuff on tap, and I guess the food was good. That's probably the reason people were there, but um, not my favorite, but also I don't think like brewery is what they like pride themselves on. I think it's more just like a restaurant and that just is going on. So I hitched on yet another ride in a pickup truck to uh, Coco and I walked over to Dirty Ore and man, that place was sick. They had a bunch of Imperial Stouts too, a lot of good beers. They had a lot of beer people coming in there. There's like home brewers next to me talking and just like, they were really onto it. Like a lot of flavored beers. That was my, the one thing like, of all their beers, I think there was only like one or two that weren't like leaning on a adjunct flavor. So there was that, but man, their adjunct beers are good. So <laughs> I give them that. Uh, a couple doors down was Bug Nutty and uh, they had some more like, kind of standard beers, some IPAs. They had a black IPA, which was okay, but I met some really cool people in there. It was, you know, really busy place in there. And uh, some guy I met next to me, he ended up giving me a ride up the coast. It was dark at this point, just to some uh, dive bar, but it got me a little north <laughs> up the coast at least. Camped out in some big old forest that I found <laughs> and uh, kind of kept moving from there. I got to uh, Titusville, kind of got soaked in the rain. I went to two breweries that day. I went to Playa Linda and then I went to Playa Linda. <laughs> so there's one in the south of town. And it's just a little bit higher ceilings and more like restaurant-y, like big money kind of vibe. Uh, big brewery in the back, uh, it, was, it was cool. And then the other one is like downtown Titus Film. They call it the hardware store. And it's more like, you know, tight knit. There's still brewing there, uh, but I actually enjoyed it more than the other places they were able to uh, sit at the bar. Some dude living in an RV actually. Uh, bought me some beers, that was cool. He left, and then when I finally went to pay my tab, they're like, that dude paid for all your beers. I'm like, oh, those beers were delicious. They had a 15% uh, stout over there. It was pretty good. I actually like the one in the south better. It was, had an orange in it, I don't know. Not that I like the orange better, I just feel like maybe it was just a different batch. It was good, but yeah, a lot of good beers, good vibes, and uh, yeah, plus when the beers are free. They always taste better. <laughs> the next day I hitched a ride up to a new Smyrna Beach. Uh, this really nice guy dropped me off at Half Wall Brewery. That was another like brewery as an afterthought kind of brewery. Beer was not great. I had a flight. Uh, the best beer was the rotating beer. So I get the idea that they got a bunch of like whatever recipes, but it, they're probably like good brewers there. So when they can like brew a one off, they're like, let's go and like brew a freaking good one. So yeah, if you go there, I kind of recommend just going after what's ever rotating, but maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, I just went there once, so who knows. Uh, I walked over there from there to a New Smyrna Beach Brewery. That place kicked ass. All the bartenders were awesome. Like every bartender I talked to was like into beer or into travel or both and their beers were delicious. So I ended up staying there for several beers because I'm like, I'm just having great conversation and drinking phenomenal beers and everyone here is awesome. New Smyrna Beach Brewery, That's it. it was a good one for sure. I walked to the road from there, stuck up my thumb, a pickup truck stop, the guy got out, he's like, hop in the back, where are you going? I'm like, Port Orange. And then I just kind of threw it out there. I was like, I'm going to Tomoko Brewery. <laughs> I didn't even know if he heard me, but I hopped in the back and I'm like, kind of getting low because I think technically it's illegal to be in a pickup truck in the back. And uh, so we're going up Highway 1, and then the dude uh, takes a left, and then he shouts out the window, grab a beer from the cooler. So I reach in the cooler, and there's like, you know, what a pickup truck beer in there. But um, I realize he's taking me directly to Tomoka Brewery, which saves me an hour walking. So I go into Tomoka Brewery, that's the next one. 
have a beer there. It was pretty good. And yeah, yeah decent. Uh, but the guy next to me just so happens his parents run or are part of the Daytona Beach General, whatever, Daytona Homebrew Club. And he's like, come on back and meet him. I'm like, yeah, buddy. So this doesn't count as one of the breweries, but sure enough, we get back to their place and they're sipping on craft beers in the back. I drink some homebrew Imperial Stout with them. They pop open some Cigar City. <sighs> Man, it was good. And then afterwards, he's like, let me take you to the next brewery on your list, which was the world's most famous brewery. <laughs> it was bike week, so it was nuts over there. So I only had one beer, because it was just crazy. It was just like, you know, you got a belly up to the bar kind of thing. And uh, honestly, I don't remember that beer too much. I don't think it was amazing, but I, I remember it being clean, you know? So that's definitely a place I would go back to. Sometimes you have a beer that's like not good because it's not your style, and sometimes you have a beer because it's not good because it's not brewed correctly. You know, it tastes like this one was brewed correctly. So I would go back there, even though it was in a tur touristy spot, and give it another chance. World's most famous brewery. Next, I had a friend up by Jacksonville, and I hadn't seen her in like five years. We'd uh, hitchhike together in Amsterdam to. Uh, Germany and caught up with her and she was down to go to St. Augustine and we went to three breweries together there. I kind of showed her some great beers, what beer culture is all about. And her first one was a great one, Old Coast Ales. Really good beers. We only just stayed there for a flight, but really good beers. Uh, next we went to uh, Dog Rose. Also, uh, you know, pretty standard, above, above standard, like good beers at Dog Rose and really good vibes. We ended up making a couple friends that we went over to Ancient Ales with. And Ancient Ales is um, not my favorite. <laughs> I'll say that. It's one of those tourist breweries that is kind of a tourist brewery. Um, people seem to like it, but mm, nah, it wasn't, wasn't my jam. It was um, not my favorite, but it, it's there, it's beer. So I hung out with her there for a little while in Jacksonville. So at one point we went to Pinglehead Brewery, which is in a little pizza shop, off also maybe kind of an afterthought. Uh, she really liked this strawberry beer that we had. I wasn't super impressed with anything that we had, but they had good vibes there. Uh, we went to Engine 15 Brewery, which was like pretty okay. Their Imperial Stout was pretty solid. Uh, but then right down the street was Southern Swells, and that place just blew me away. I hadn't heard of them at all, no reputation, and wow. Their barrel-aged stouts were on point. They had hazy IPAs that just crushed. Uh, everything they had was great. I cashed out three times. Like, well, let's leave. Eh, maybe let's go get another. Let's leave. Eh, yeah, another. <laughs> and then we ended up going to some like place next door and there's this music and we were jamming and having a good time. And then finally on St. Patrick's Day, the day that we parted ways, we first went to Kingmaker Brewery, which is in Riverside, Jacksonville. And that place is a awesome hangout. They just got, you know, all the games, cornhole and foosball and Jenga and checkers and all this stuff and phenomenal beers from German kind of style beers to IPAs and just really good stuff. They had a green beer, of course, for St. Patrick's Day. Right down the road was Bold City Brewery and that's the kind of beer that you can find in the grocery stores. I'd actually already had that cream ale earlier in the trip, so that was good. And then, you know, we went and jammed out at some non-brewery beer garden. Getting towards the end here, getting towards the end. So finally the next day, I hitchhiked the longest I'd hitched in the trip. I ended up skipping quite a bit because I got a, ooh, <laughs> got a ride all the way to Pensacola. So I skipped Tallahassee. I've been in Tallahassee before, I should mention. There's 75 breweries I'm talking about here, but I've been to at least 100 in Florida in my lifetime. I'm just talking about February and March <laughs> here. So skipped some of the stuff in Tallahassee, got to Pensacola. And the first brewery I went to was a Little Madness. And that place seemed to be hurting. Like, they're down to brewing on this one barrel system. Um, beer is okay. They had an IPA. They just, um, I don't know. They should just 
open up a little more, <laughs> they'd be good. Because yeah, right down the way is uh, Goat Lips, which is more of a restaurant, also an afterthought kind of brewery. But I know the story behind them because the two guys went to Sierra Nevada Beer Camp, which I also went to beer camp. They went to beer camp number 58. I went to Sierra Nevada Beer Camp 117. And they brewed a beer there. They had their release party at this Goat Lips restaurant. And then they decided to brew there. So yeah, try their Sierra Nevada beer. It's a red IPA. That's what you want to get. That's what you want to get. They got a bunch of guest stops too. And then I went to one of my favorite breweries in Trip, just down the way from them, walking distance for me at least, Coastal County. Coastal County has some killers. Again, uh, their Imperial Stout, actually, you know, their Imperial Stout was okay. Uh, it's, it's not bad, uh, but their IPAs were great and most of their beers are great. And yeah, they got food and seltzer and the backyard forever. I didn't see the end of their dog park and everything else they got. I, I really like that place. I ended, up, I ended up camping kind of nearby. I almost camped on their property, but I was like, hmm. <laughs> they got a whole thing going on tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna let that slide. Um, the next day was, again, one of the drunker days of the trip and the second to last day of beer drinking in Florida. I went to Odd Colony, an on-point brewery for sure. Um, they just had all the good stuff. Uh, good vibes, just a walk-in kind of, you know, new brewery sort of vibe. Um, then I went to Perfect Plain, taco truck in the back, uh, cocktails, all that stuff, but just really good IPAs. Um, I have a... I think I had a porter, yeah, I had a porter there as well. But the IPAs are kind of where it's at. Uh, some rotating hazies. I'm forgetting the name of their main IPA, but just when you get there, get that. It's like a pretty solid double IPA. Uh, just down closer to downtown was Five Barrel. It's kind of disappointed because I went to Five Barrel last year and they had a Dogfish Head 120 Minute Clone and I was really excited to get it again. They had just kicked the keg or whatever, so I had a stout, which was okay. I was just, meh. <laughs> where was my dogfish at 120? 18% IPA. Ooh, served in a five ounce glass. They're not gonna give you more than five ounces. Get that if you go. Didn't have it this trip, but I've had it in the past. Woo! Right around the corner is the other big top. I told you I went to the Sarasota big top. And, this was a good time. <laughs> Big Top, they've got a lot to choose from and I chose quite a bit. I ended up meeting some people there and we went back to Five Barrel, wound up in some trailer and I won't even tell you everything that happened. It was just madness. That was Brewery 74. Somewhere I got a, a counter here. So the next day, I got a Bloody Mary and I marched over to the last brewery, Emerald Republic and it did not disappoint. Brewery 75, the final brewery I went to on this little swing. Oh my God, it was awesome. Such a good time. Everyone there was amazing. They were giving me crawfish. I met the brewer. He gave me four barrel-aged Saison bottles just because he's a badass. <laughs> and oh man, I drank the hell out of him. I actually filmed this video already, but I messed up the audio. So you're seeing me with no voice in that video but there's just a video and those bottles and those saisons were so good all their beers were so good that place was just jamming it was awesome and here we are i've reached the end of this beer we've reached the end of the 75 breweries in florida and that's it i got to alabama the next day so Woo! I'm glad you enjoyed this vicarious, vicarious uh, trip of brewery jumping with me. Uh, if you've been to a brewery that I did not mention in Florida, throw it in the comments. Let me know. Let everybody know. If I misrepresented a brewery, if I said something was great and you're like, nah, well then you're wrong. But if I said something is not great and you're like, it's fantastic, do tell me that because, yeah you know, catch brewery on a bad day. Or it's like to question, I barely remember. Uh, yeah, just let the people know. 
let this be an informative little thing for everybody. So scroll down, leave your comment, read a comment, and uh, god damn, Florida. Florida's got some breweries, man. <laughs> now we all know. Cheers.